Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna show you how to mount a C-Face motor to a three-piece coupled input gearbox. And helping us out is Mr. Regular, I like to say on the set, Dave Felt from Baldor. Dave, good to have you back hey, again, Tom. man. Great to be here, thank you. Good to see you. We've got lots of goodies on the table, it's all spread apart, and I have a feeling we're gonna put it all together, aren't we? We are. Uh, there's really two commonly found types of gearboxes that mount to C-Face motors. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a quill style, which we've done a module on that, right. which is a close coupled unit. There's also another style known as a three-piece coupled input, and that's really what we've got here in front of us today. The advantage of a three-piece coupled unit is the fact that the motor is more easily removed than a typically found with quill style. All right. Well, how do you want to get started today? Well, you know, with the three-piece coupled unit, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we clean the face of the C-face on mm -hmm. the motor. So you're going to take a clean rag, and you're going to make sure you wipe that, that surface clean. You want to make sure that the shaft is clean as well. Right. And same goes for the gearbox. You want to make sure that that C-face is also clear of any burrs or anything like that. Yeah, contaminants, no good no matter where they are. Not good. Not no. good at all. All right. What do you want to so do So what we've got in front of us here is a separate Dodge gearbox, and we've already gone through the steps to mount the flower pot or the adapter to the gearbox. So we've already got installed the gearbox side of the coupling, the okay. input coupling, and that's already in position. And we followed the instruction manual accordingly to get that mounted. Got to do. I love instruction manuals, by Absolutely. the way. They always help out. Okay, um, elastomeric next? That's right. The next thing we want to work on is lining up the coupling on the input side of the gearbox. So right. we take the elastomeric element and right. we place it over the input hub that's located on the uh, gearbox shaft. All right, uh, gasket? Yeah, the next thing we want to do is we want to position the gasket onto the C-face of the gearbox. And a little trick here, you might remember from the quill module, is to spread a little bit of grease on that gasket and then locate the gasket lining up the holes properly on the C-face. That will help to hold that gasket in place. Yeah, we don't want that moving all around. That's right. Just a little bit, just to kind of just set it, give a little sticky on it. That's correct. All correct. right, what do we got coming up next? So the next thing we want to do is we want to take the, the motor hub side of the input coupling, mm -hmm. and we want to line that up accordingly, lining up the hub and lining up the the keyway so that we have a good position and we can easy, more easily line up our motor. Okay, is it time to put our motor up there now? Well, now that we've done that, we want to remove the access hole cover and locate the motor. So having the motor lined up with the shaft in the right position, mm -hmm. we then would position the motor and locate it. All right, I'm going to act as your grease gearbox. for the gasket right Thank here you. so we hold it still. All righty. Very good. All right. So now what we've got is the motor's in position, mm -hmm. the gasket's in position, the coupling is aligned, okay? The next step we want to do is we want to make sure that we have the coupling mounted properly. This is key. We want to make sure that there's a, a 1 one hundredth to 3 one hundredth shim that exists between the, the element and the hub of the, of the gearbox side of the coupling. Now why do we want to do that? Uh, it's just a good idea not to have the metal to metal hub touching on the coupling. We really okay. want the elastomeric element in between the two hubs to really take and transmit the load. Okay, when we do that, we're gonna take that and we're gonna tighten that up in there, am I right? That's right, Tom. The next See. step would okay. be to take an Allen wrench and tighten the hub once we now have it located properly on the motor shaft, tighten it to the torque found in the instruction manual. All right. And the last thing we have is we have the motor bolts. We gotta put our bolts on there and of course we have our torque wrench and we wanna make sure everything always has to be torqued properly. Absolutely, and certainly the instruction manual will tell you based on the size of the gearbox what the torque rating should be on the mo the bolts that you put in the motor flange. Then we can go pop that back in and That's our motor exactly is right. ready to go. Dave, all set, ready to go. Always good information, always simple. Why do you make it so easy Thank you, for Tom. me? Thank you, Tom. Thank you. I love it. That's Dave Felt from Baldor. Uh, if you have any questions about anything you saw here today, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. They'll be able to help you out. And uh, don't forget to wear your PPE with whatever you're doing. We didn't have to do it for today's demo, but uh, remember, safety is priority number one. Priority number two, go to mihowto.com to view more videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching today.